So our next contest is between boxers from Papua New Guinea and Scotland. Ladies and gentlemen, first to the ring, boxing out of the red corner, representing Papua New Guinea, Neville Warupe. On his way to the boxing ring for his second bout of Birmingham 2022. He's Neville Warupe, 25 years of age from Port Moresby reigning national champion of Papua New Guinea. In his first bout here, he was a 4-1 split decision winner over Pemberton Lele of the Cook Islands. An absolutely the terrific contest the corner, where he progressed. Scotland, Tyler Jolly! Well, 23-year-old Tyler Jolly. Yeah, but, man, that was so <laughs> in his second contest of Birmingham 2022. But in his first round, well, he didn't waste any time at all, scoring a knockout over Daniel Hilton of Jamaica in 20 seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a quarterfinal in the men's welterweight division, contested over three three-minute rounds. Introducing to you first in the red corner, representing Papua New Guinea, Neville Warupi. And his opponent boxing out of the blue corner, representing Scotland, Tyler Jolly. Good shot. More here. More open here. Chicken. Good luck. This is shot, Tyler. Let's go. We're in the 67 kilogram welterweight division and this is quarter-final action between boxers from Papua New Guinea and Scotland. The man wearing red is Neville Warupi. And the man looking for hard shots to both body and head is another right hand sunk in is Tyler Jolly. Something of a history man, Tyler Jolly, because he set a new record for the fastest victory in Commonwealth Games boxing competition. A 20-second knockout of Daniel Hilton of Jamaica in his round of 16 contest, beating the record set by Swaziland's Leonard Macanya. And he scored a 21-second stoppage in 1986 over Kerry Webber. And he started this contest briskly as well. But Warupi, a big physical welterweight, looking to get inside the longer arms of Tyler Jolly and work away to the torso and here's an evidence of his physicality not averse to some rough stuff it's never Warupi well Jolly started this contest very quickly indeed Ronald maybe he was going trying to break his own record but um, Warupi just showed him that, that he's, he's a dangerous operator here oh that's low my goodness, yeah. that was demonstrably low. But the referee didn't call time. So Warupi's got to deal with the discomfort and keep on boxing. Yeah, and he's dangerous, Warupi. Right hand over the top from him. He's also fairly um, effective for Warupi. But again, Jolly started his contest on that front foot there. And he, he started up very strongly. These body shots especially, that's good work from Jolly. Good left hook landed by Warupi. At the conclusion of Jolly's success. Two minutes gone in this opening round. Warupi looking to employ head movement now to make the man in blue miss. And he did just that, but he couldn't make him pay. 
So put on the end of a one-two for Rupi. Good adjustment from Jolly. As the man was ducking, that's where the leather was landing. Beautiful punch picking between the gloves of Warupi and then up on his toes to dance away. And a clockwise motion from Jolly. Very good use of the ring space. Yes, opting just to box from the outside and then just spring the attack. Quick hands. Just get caught there as he's moving away, so you've got to keep those hands up. But oh, he missed there, made that mistake. Left hook leading on the left hook sometimes. If he misses. Then you can fall into a bit of trouble, and he got away with it. Closing seconds of an action-packed opening round. Tyler Jolly started at a breakneck pace again. He's had terrific success to the body, his left hook in particular. Let's listen to Craig McAvoy. Accuracy, OK? Wasted no shots. Because we're going to keep coming back. He's a tough old bugger, all right? Mm -hmm. So we'll put focus and accuracy, and that'll start wearing them down. Use your footwork because there's no footwork. Touch him wet, okay. touch him wet. When he closes up, one. I think movement in this round was key to, to Jolly's success here. On the outside, and then he's whipping shots, then he's moving again. Some good work downstairs to the body by both boxers. Oh, that one it was on the blind side of the referee, but low isn't the <laughs> thing is the word for that. Very low indeed, but um, Jolly got away with it and did the better work for me. This fella is still dangerous though, Ronald, but I think Jolly um, took that first round. Yep, I would agree with you. Let's take a look at the scorecards. 10-9 across the board, 10-8, excuse me, 10-9 for four of the judges, 10-8 for the judge from Germany. That's a little bit harsh on Warupi. But Jolly, a unanimous winner of the first round. So we're Rupi coming out aggressively. What a roundhouse right! And he catches Tyler Jolly on the temple and scores it into touchdown. Big moments now in the career of Tyler Jolly. Caught by a thunderous right hand with just less than 30 seconds gone on the clock. And now he has either got to tuck up and allow his senses to clear or fight his way out of trouble. Beautifully picked shot from Neville Warupi, knocking Tyler Jolly to the canvas. Terrifically picked punch from the reigning national champion of Papua New Guinea. What a right hand that was. So Jolly's just got to watch what he's doing here now. Warupi still coming forward, still looking for that right hand over the top. So it's important that Jolly keeps the jack, keep the. There it is again. This time it was the inside of the glove, but. Jolly, the signs are there that Jolly's just got to watch out for that. Keep that jab nice and long and straight. Don't be falling in. You can't, you can't afford to be a slow jab. But keep those hands up. And try and move off to the right a little bit more. If he drifts to the left, then Warupi may land that shot again. Keep oh. the punches nice and straight, Ronald, here. So Jolly has done a good job to get himself through that moment of crisis but he's caught by a left hook that's a solid shot again from Warupi who is encouraged and his confidence surging after the successes that he is having with heavy shots being landed from both flanks Warupi marauding his way forwards once again Tyler Jolly holding on hitting on the break but the referee didn't call break it was a, hit, a shot fired on a disengagement by Warupi well within his rights to do so Left hook on the inside from Jolly. Whose coordination may not yet have completely returned after he was buzzed by a booming backhand from Warupi with less than 30 seconds gone in round number two. Good left hook to the body once again from Jolly. Still opting to throw some bent arm shots and allow Warupi to close that gap. So Jolly again. Taking risks here, there's that right hand over the top, not too far away, but Jolly's still going forward. But this has been a complete turnaround. He dominated that first round in Jolly, but what a right hand that's changed the complexion of this contest completely. Just a reminder, in Olympic star boxing, sending your man to the canvas will not necessarily result in a 10-8 card, as is the case by way of consensus in professional boxing. Well, let's take a look at the card, but this man swaggers his way back to the red corner. Oh, why not? Because he landed a bazooka of a backhand. 
Yeah, that must have evened the contest up a little bit there, Ronald. Let's have a look at this right hand over the top. There it was there. What a belting shot that was. Jolly took it well. Cracking shot, great technique. Right hand over the top. Perfect punch for Warupi. So let's take a look at the scores. Well, I'm sorry, I, I'm staggered by that. Because Tyler Jolly has taken it for judges three and four. Which I do find surprising. Yeah, very surprising. There's no way he won that round. So, yeah, he's got a bit of luck there. For Rufi. And that's very unlucky for him. And because of the 10 8 scorecard that was returned by Judge 1, that judge did score in favor of Warupi, but he's trailing on that card. 19 points to 18 is Warupi. So only two tied scores of 19 points apiece for judges two and five. And I think that is that is really unfortunate and perhaps unjust in the direction of Never Warupi. Because it wasn't a 10 8 round from my vantage point in the first. Jolly won it, but I don't think it was 10 8. And then when he detonated that right hand, he still finds himself trailing. How a judge can score that second round for Tyler Jolly is beyond me. So going in pursuit of the stoppage victory that he needs is Neville Warupi. Tyler Jolly showing good survival instincts. And not just survival instincts, because he's aggressive as well. As Richie pointed out, he's continuing to throw bent arm shots with the hooks and uppercuts. Yeah, I mean, he's taking a lot of risks here, Jolly. He should be... Um, just boxing at range and keeping it mid to long. He's still allowing R Warupi to come forward. He's trying to, to, to meet him head on. But by doing that, it's a lot of bent arm work. And uh, you're just giving Warupi a chance to land that right hand again. So halfway through the third and final round, Tyler Jolly keen to initiate a clinch. Why is Warupi not working away? He's accepting the clinch, clinch from the man in blue. And remember, time is on Jolly's side in the sense that he is leading for three of the five scoring judges. Just uh, tying his opponent up on the inside there, Jolly. So you can see what he's trying to do there. Left, right attempted on the resumption from Jolly. There is this demonstrating nice lateral movement, both left and right. But again, Warupi may be feeling the pace after that big shift that he put in in the second round. And perhaps he isn't able to summon up the energy to launch his own aggressive assaults that served him so well in the second round. Big swing and a miss with the right hook from Warupi. Jolly, his movements appearing altogether sharper now. There's his vaunted left hook to the body, which landed on the right flank of Warupi. Yeah, Jolly's weathered the storm, Ronald, hasn't he? And he's got to grips again with this uh, last round now. 30 seconds coming up, there's still time for Warupi. But Jolly, again now, he's boxing more sensible. Roundhouse right was altogether less potent than the one which put Jolly on the canvas in round two from Warupi. And you hear the Scottish corner counting down the clock. Warupi will be aware of that too. He comes out winging another right hook, but it's off the mark. Courtesy of good head movement from Tyler Jolly. And Tyler Jolly blankets his man, forcing the intervention of the referee. Still bombing away with that backhand. Here's Neville Warupi. But it will be Tyler Jolly, given the context of the scorecards going into the third and final round, who I think is going to progress through to the medal stages. But my goodness, what a fright he was given by that booming overhand right detonated by Neville Warupi in the second round. Again, I think the scores, quite frankly, were scandalous in that second stanza. But that's how they've gone in the book. And it will be Tyler Jolly who progresses through to the final four from my perspective. Let's see what the scorecards read. It's hard to see how, how Jolly's got two of the, the scorecards in the, in the second round, Ronald. I, I agree with you there. But uh, Jolly weathered the storm and boxed better again in the last round. And overall, it, it won the contest we for go me. to the judges' scorecards for a unanimous decision for your winner. In the blue corner, representing So Tyler Scotland. Jolly, Ta with a terrific victory Ta over Ta Neville Ta Warupi, the reigning two-time national champion of Papua New Guinea.
depositing him on the canvas. Terrific effort by him and wonderful to see that respect between the boxers and the opposing coaches. And it's Tyler Jolly who overcame the crisis after he was sent crashing to the canvas in the second round by Neville Warupi. Allowed his senses to recover and boxed quite effectively in the third and final round. Warm embrace from Josh Taylor, the 2014 Commonwealth Games gold medalist who went on to become the fifth man of the four belt era to become the, an undisputed world champion. Claiming like welterweight success in the pro ranks, securing all four belts. And Tyler Jolly remains in contention to emulate what Josh Taylor did in Glasgow eight years ago because he's through to the final four in the 67 kilogram welterweight tournament. Well, after the first round, it was all going so well for the man in blue, but then he walked onto that shot in the second round that completely changed things around. Or oh, as we thought, but at the end of the round, He's only won the round 3-2. I think Jolly boxed much better in the last round, weather the storm, and won that last round. So overall, you know, he's deserved to win it. But um, Mr. Warupi.